In the gym environment, we will see improvements in the data being made available to coach an athlete in real time. Through the use of portable force plates, accelerometer technology, and wireless systems, the coach will be able to view in real time the force time profiles of their athletes during each repetition completed. Now this information can be made available through a screen uh, directly to the athlete, allowing them to make real time adjustments to their technique to maximize strength or power output. Elite training academies like Aspire in Qatar are looking at developing a real time wireless network throughout their entire center, allowing athletes anywhere in the complex to be monitored and evaluated real time if required. Advantages are that once the athlete has finished their session, by the time they have showered and made their way back to whether it be somewhere to eat or in fact to review their data, it's been processed and is available for viewing. The availability of real-time feedback will accelerate performance improvement across the board. Wireless technologies are going to play a larger role in elite sport in the near future. The ability to stream real-time data to numerous places during training or competition will change the way sport will be conducted in the near future. Add to this the ability to update the athlete real-time no matter where they are will lead to more rapid development through immediate and constructive feedback. And so an example uh, again in Australia is that uh, we have athletes that now wear uh, devices in games, data is being streamed real-time to the coaches boxes, real-time to the conditioning coaches and the trainers on the sideline, it's then being streamed to broadcasting to be shown on TV and even being streamed to radio so that actual commentators can actually make comments on performances of individual athletes during the actual game. Further advances are even with the basic infrared running light systems that have been around for years and years. Uh, they've really had a, quite a serious makeover now with much smarter systems now available. These systems uh, can actually look at uh, much more advanced training systems and tactics and techniques for athletes. You then also then add uh, increased or better uses of GPS, accelerometers and RFID technology is really going to allow for greater insight into how an athlete is performing allowing for more specific feedback, resulting in faster improvement, which you hope leads to better performance. One area that we're particularly excited by is the use of accelerometer and associated technologies uh, used in pattern recognition products. So this image uh, on this current slide shows an example of an athlete that we measured with an accelerometer while they're actually jogging around. Now this athlete had quite an evident imbalance in the impact forces between his left and his right leg as shown on the left hand side of the slide. Now upon further investigation it was highlighted that this athlete was recovering from a knee reconstruction some months earlier. So the ability to be able to pick up such an imbalance when jogging is vital because in running or sprinting this imbalance may have become such that there was the possibility of re-injury of the operated leg or overloading of the opposite leg. Uh, we really see this technology as something that will be able to be applied to a whole variety of different movement patterns, uh, giving again more information on how an athlete is actually performing their particular tasks, the effect that fatigue has on performance, um, and overall trying to again minimise injury and maximise performance uh, in the athletes that you're working with. Another area that is uh, slowly gaining popularity is that of the use of online products. Now this uh, particular example, Perfect Session, is an example uh, that allows the input of a variety of training information. Uh, feedback can be given, the information can be made available to others, uh, which can be particularly useful if uh, a coach had athletes who are overseas, they can still continue to train, upload their training data on a daily basis, allowing the coach to continue to monitor their progress no matter where they are in the world. Uh, you can set up squads with these sorts of systems so that you can have athletes comparing themselves to someone else and you know, this certainly allows for opportunities to have athletes training in a variety of different places remotely and still being in touch with uh, fellow athletes and coaches and trainers and conditioning consultants uh, alike. Now we wanted to spend a little bit of time on what we see is really the latest technology that has been applied now to particularly elite team sports and that of uh, GPS. Now this is global positioning satellite technology. Through the use of this technology the coach is able to monitor time, distance, speeds and directions of their athletes in a team environment. Now you combine this data with real-time wireless technology and the coach now has at their fingertips one of the most powerful technologies for accurate objective analysis of training loads and intensities. 
Now, people may not be aware that there actually are several GPS systems. Uh, the main one that has been in use for a number of years now is the uh, standard GPS from, from the USA. But in the near future, there will be multiple systems available. Uh, Galileo will be the most relevant uh, with positional accuracy is unattainable by the other systems. Now, this system will be available in the Northern Hemisphere in 2009-2010, uh, and the first satellites are being actually um, shot up to space this year in 2008. Now, one of the key questions people often ask about GPS is its accuracy. And I guess, just quickly, there are two main or key aspects to this. First, there is the absolute positional accuracy of GPS. This is where you are on the planet. And typically, uh, it, it's about three to five metres. So anywhere on the planet that you're standing, you are within three to five metres of your true location from one, uh, one moment to another. Secondly, and more importantly for sport, is what we call relative accuracy or relative positional accuracy. For example, if you travel a thousand metres, uh, whether it be running or doing some sort of activity, typically a good GPS system will give you a measurement of somewhere between about 990 to 1,010 metres. So you're looking at you know, around a 1% error margin. This typically is, is suitable uh, for, for most teams or most athletes because you know, prior to this system being available, there was actually, they didn't know how far they were travelling. So even if there is a percent or a couple of percent error, this is generally acceptable across the board. Also what GPS can spit out is speed, and speed is typically very accurate with GPS and these outputs can be measured in kilometres an hour or miles an hour, miles an hour or metres per second as required. We see GPS particularly suitable for sport for a range of sort of key reasons. I mean, the first one is that no calibration required. GPS is a self-calibrating system. Basically, as long as you've got a receiver, which is the little device, you turn it on, it self-calibrates, and then you're, you're tracking your athletes wherever they may be. The second, as already mentioned, we can measure a variety of variables, uh, such as position, time, distance, and speed, uh, which can then be translated to a whole range of more sport-specific applications. The system works anywhere in the world, which is extremely useful if you have athletes that are actually travelling on a regular basis. And finally, it can be used in training and potentially competition. Uh, we have a number of codes, both in Australia and overseas, that have been given the go-ahead for the use of this technology in games. Now this straight away allows the clubs and codes to gain valuable insight into the performance of players and the games as a whole, which then can be brought back to training, allowing for much more specific training programs built around very game specific data. Now a particularly useful application of GPS technologies in what we call time motion analysis. Uh, 20 years ago to do a time motion of a game generally required a single PhD student filming a game and then digitizing this frame by frame which took hours and hours. Now basically real time or immediately post game all the relevant information is available to coaches and players. Now what we've seen over the past few years with the codes we're heavily involved with is a pretty dramatic change in the total volumes and intensities of the game based on the data that has been uh, captured on a weekly basis. So for example, in Australian rules football in the past five years, there has been, on average, a decrease in the total distance covered from 17 kilometres per game to 13 kilometres per game. But over a doubling of the number of sprints performed, a dramatic increase in time in high velocity running, and the number of substitutions have in some cases quadrupled. Now this information has been made available to all coaches allowing them to modify their training programs. As well, the Australian Football League has this information allowing them to review the current state of the game, allowing them to suggest rule changes that will further enhance the game. So we hope with time that more and more codes will see the advantage of, of this sort of technology in games, allowing the improvement of individual clubs and the overall code itself. What is the latest and best in, in certainly sport GPS technology is that of the SPY Pro supplied by uh, my company, GP Sport Systems. Now, it's a small and powerful system and can supply key information in a real-time environment to coaches and, as mentioned before, even to broadcasting. And we have several codes and broadcasters where we now actually stream game data to broadcasting for viewer, viewer pleasure. Now, this sort of technology